That's why in if you notice when it come on, it starts in Oakland. Now, in Oakland is where Tupac's um, rap career really developed after he left Baltimore School of the Arts. So the movie was like a precursor or a predictor of how the events in the final age is supposed to unfold. So you take a look at um, the movie Panther. When it first come on, you see a, a alien ship. But the ship is not truly alien, it's African and it's cloaked and it's from Earth. So there is a clue right there to something. So we have to go search our history. We have to search our Native American history, our African history, our Asian history to find out if this movie has any validity in the storyline. In the storyline, if you pay attention, you'll see that this dude, that there's the prince, the crown prince, is fighting to maintain the control of his nation without the world in, invading their privacy and trying to steal their wealth, resources, and their technology. So he's trying to protect it from that. But now you have his cousin who is in, grew up, outside of that and he really have no um sense of understanding of what it's like on the inside of trying to protect these secrets and these rights so he just want to just set this off he want to just tear it up kill all of the enemy never knowing that there's something else in play here and so these two become emissaries this is Tupac and Biggie all day long, according to the storyline in pop culture that they're repeating. This is Tupac and Biggie. Now watch what happened. So he get attempted assassination. They thought he was dead. But while he was recovering, he is um, basically resurrected by the chief of a guerrilla clan. Why the guerrilla clan? Now, if you go back to ancient Egypt, you know your Egyptian studies, there's only one totem animal that has not been produced in the hieroglyph, and that is the gorilla. The reason being is because the last totem to rule would be the gorilla or the monkey king or the king of the Congo because the True Holy Land is not in the Middle East, so don't fall for that. Those imposters over there are not Jews. That's not the Holy Land. So go back to the movie. Look at how they set the map of Africa up because there's no country in Africa called Wakanda, but the geographical landmass they speak of, you can match up the area to the Congo. And the guerrilla chief telling them, I got the right to the throne. I can, you know, but he don't really want to continue because he think that my man, the panther, can do this without bringing the world to ruin, basically. So he's like, I don't want to get in it. He let his mother heal him up, get him back in the fight, get him back in the game. Boom, he reclaimed the kingdom. At the end of the movie, you find him where? Back in Oakland. Talking about the recovery. Now, when we talk about the recovery that he's going over and how he's going to teach the people the truth and all of this stuff and build the museums, the recovery is the exposure of the times, the history, and how this all is weaved together. Now, remember... They have to tell, give you the opportunity to discover the manner in which the deception is taking place. But they do not have to tell it to you outright, direct, directly, or factually. They can veil it in, in children's art form and make you believe that it's only entertainment. But you've been exposed to the storyline already. So you're supposed to be um, perceptive enough to see it. Once they gave you the opportunity to discover, if you do not discover, 
that absolves them so then they can do another blood ritual and rite to capture what you use as an ignorance. They can capture it and use it as you giving consent to them to use your power to keep you oppressed. You are consenting to them by not acknowledging the truth that's in plain sight that they can control you. Do I say, okay, you can control me because I'm not smart enough to see what's before me. But you, it's not that you're not smart enough. They use trickery. They use trickery and deception. So in the movie Panther, you see the whole story play out of Tupac, his beef with, with Biggie, that's the same story. We don't even match the storyline up and realize it's the same exact story because we don't pay attention to the subtleties. The distractions is more what we pay attention to, the explosions, the costumes, but we don't pay attention to the content or the context of the storyline which goes to the planet of the apes because in the planet of the apes, you got the same story. You got Cobra and you got Caesar at conflict, but both of them is for their people, but they got two different agendas. This is Malcolm and Mark, Martin Luther King all day long. Both of them end up getting killed, but they telling you a double story with planet of the apes. Actually it's multiple stories in the planet of the apes. Because the Planet of the Apes is representative of the RH positive blood factor. Um, the undermining forces which came was RH negative reptilian bloodline, whereas the human, the evolved human, was RH positive mammalian bloodline. Now, when you talk about the Planet of the Apes, you're talking about the returning to Earth to its natural owners. The RH positive. Now, the RH negative bloodlines influence the genetics without the permission from the creator, which caused a whole lot of problems, which I'm not going to get into here. I want to stay on the planet of the apes in the story that's being told in it. It's the Moses story if you really pay attention. At the end is where, it's, after the final one, is when he's sitting up there and shot, is where you realize it's the Moses story. So you go back to the beginning of the Planet of the Apes, and it gives you the unfolding of the beginning of the Christ story of the New Testament, but it ends with the telling of the Moses story. And they did that because it's the same story, but it was changed subtly so as to confuse us as to how the actual story went. If they don't tell you the story in sequential order, it's up to you to figure out the sequence. So they can tell it to you out of order in order to confuse you, but it's up to you and it take a lot of time and research and trying to be accurate with your research to be able to put the pieces together. So in Caesar started out as just a regular um, evolved chimp. And he had something in his blood that was given to his mother. Um, this is your Eve story. And Eve was supposed to be infused with the light strain by the serpent. And the light strain was able to give her seed the life strain, which was the access to eternal life. So the light strain is the knowledge, the light strain. Then the life strain is the evolved wisdom of, of ascension. That's, that's the tree of life. So you got the tree of knowledge, which is the light strain, which is the DNA being encoded with packets of light that carry binary code that tells you when to wake up from a slumber where you had to learn life lessons, and then you evolve back into your angelic form. So this is all encoded in the DNA. So when you see them giving Caesar's mother the injection, it's affecting the baby that's in her that she's carrying. And when she protects her child, it kills her. 
That's supposed to be the story of the Christ because the Christ is not a man. The Christ is a woman. And the son of man was her son, as you see with the black Madonna and child. So when we get that story straightened out, all of the rest of them lines up. And so they couldn't kill the Christ if they wanted to. But that goes on to a whole other subject matter. I want to stay with the Planet of the Apes. In the story of the Planet of the Apes, it is the Nazca lines, the movie King Kong, and the repeated telling of the Planet of the Apes, the origin of the story, and the major symbols and names that connect it all. To go into um, the origin of the Planet of the Apes story, it was written in um, pulp fiction form as a novel, and it came out of Paris, France. It's the significance to that, and I'm going to touch a little bit, but I'm not going to go too deep into that, because that's a whole other thing. That's the bloodline of the um, Holy Grail. So, the um, book came from France, the same as the Statue of Liberty came from France. You got to remember that, because later on in another video, we're going to clear all up to the why factor of that. So, the um, book was written in France by a Frenchman. In um, several interviews, he said, this book, this story, The Planet of the Apes, is when about the Nur, the Nur, the Nur, the black people take charge of Earth or reclaim Earth. And he said this is the day, the, the day of the dread of, of the white people. He was a Frenchman that wrote the book. And so they was going back to the United States Constitution, the Three-Fifth Compromise. They was going to the biblical Exodus reference and the story of Moses. They was going to the story of the Christ. Now, you got to remember, the Jews are waiting on Moses. The Jews are waiting on Moses. They're waiting on the Son of Man. They've never been waiting on um, the Christ because they fear her. They only want the Son. They, they, they wanted the Son of Man or they thought they did. But the Son will never betray the mother as has been proven time and time again. The son will never betray the mother, as has been proven time and time again. So this is where your black Madonna is. So this is when they took Caesar, the son, from the mother. Now, Caesar is being raised as a human, but he's an ape. Now the sisters all over this bitch, and you run from them. You can't get along with them. It's sisters that's trying to put together fucking uh, vanguards, but you don't fuck with them. Where's the sisters you fuck with? I mean, the ones you always <coughs> bully around. <coughs> that don't count. <coughs> you can't put together a matriarch, a matriarchy, and have a female in the middle of good-hearted women with jealousy and resentment in her heart because that's going to make all of them have that same feeling back toward her which is going to affect the children. If you're a parent, that shit don't fly. You don't nobody over your child is spilling hate into them, do you? So why would you do it? You want nobody over your child spilling hate. So why would you do it? You had the little kids now curse worse than the grown folks. I don't mind them cursing personally because we are living in a society where there is a problem and nobody should be using politically correct nothing under the face of oppression. Everything's supposed to be politically incorrect directly. Because you don't agree with the whole oppressive structure. The only reason why you don't be politically correct is because being politically correct means you're in agreement and you are agreeing that the politics is correct. 
I don't agree to that shit. Fuck them bitches. They can kiss my ass from here to Albuquerque, teabag they self when they get there, and drown in my feces. I don't give a fuck. Political correct that shit. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Now me, I ain't know what you call uh tyrannical ruler type motherfucker I believe motherfucker needs an opportunity and they can do they can govern their own goddamn self but in the world where everybody can't govern they self they got external motherfuckers to do it for them the problem is why don't nobody have self control that's the, that's the question we need to be asking in the world we live in nobody has self control where is it at they surrender self-control for social control. Social dominance of a society. It's the whole thing. That gives you the ability to escape your own responsibility for your own actions because you rely on a society to tell you what is right and what is wrong when you should already know what's written in your heart. What you feel like. When you about to shoot this motherfucker in his face, you don't feel like you about to do something that's not good? You don't think you say, I shouldn't shoot this? You don't, don't never come to your mind that maybe it's another way I don't got to blast his head off? You talk about Black Lives Matter because the police killed the nigga, but you killed 10? That don't match to me. That shit off balance. You can't say Black Lives Matter why you taking black lives because somebody else took a black life that didn't look like you black lives matter has to be unilaterally and then as soon as you say black lives matter you nullified the validity of black lives mattering because you had to tell a motherfucker the fact that you got to tell somebody that you matter mean you had to be an insignificant, no business born motherfucker to begin with. Or else you wouldn't have never had to say you matter. What is the remedy? Matter to yourself. First. You don't matter to yourself. It won't, it won't, it, you can just go and follow the system. You can go and be one of their drones. You get funneled like cow through a maze to work, to school, and back home in a cycle. <clears throat> Periodically, some people rise a little bit higher because they can't take that level of oppression at the bottom. They work a little bit harder. They call that lighting a fire under your ass. <clears throat> so they light a fire under you by making you emotionally opposed to your current condition until you are driven from an internal source to change your condition to a condition that you are acceptable and compatible with. Some people don't give a fuck. You gonna try to hold me down, motherfucker. I'm some I'm just gonna enjoy the bottom. Shit. I'm gonna be comfortable at the bottom just as well as you comfortable at the top. Bitch, it don't matter to me. Bring it. I can take it all. But there's others that's gonna squeal a little bit more and more. Depending on what they made of. That means they're gonna move higher up the socio socioeconomic ladder in standings of the standard of the society because it keeps you from being a pressure cooker, you got to have room to grow out of that suffering front to a level you can satisfy. I mean, you become, oh yeah, this is a comfortable slave spot right here. God damn it, I got the dough man spot. And the other motherfuckers say, fuck that, I'm the taxi driver. But you're still a slave. You're still working for somebody else other than your children because that's who you're really supposed to be working for as a parent. You don't work for you. That shit ain't got nothing to do with you. You made these babies. You got to take care of them. Now you got a reason to work. It ain't personal. Got nothing to do with you. You have a responsibility. Just deal with it. Go to work. 
It's not personal. Stop taking that shit personal. The balls at the job need to be the same way. Just because you got a motherfucking different position don't make you better than the next motherfucker. I might know more about your position than you do, but choose a different position because it makes it easier for me to have more structured time with my family. But people don't take that into consideration and assume because you're in a different position that you are lesser than them. You're not as smart as them and you're not as valuable as them. But sometimes they take your ass out of that motherfucking position that you in temporarily and realize how value you was just where the fuck you was at. Some people, you don't know they value until they gone. You don't know their contributions until those same contributions is not being made. Championship team that traded the guy because he didn't have over 10 points a game, forgot that he had 20 assists. Goddamn 13 rebounds, four block shots, 